By now you read Parashat Mishpatim, Shnaim Mikra Vechat Targum. It's not an easy mitzvah to do, but it's an amazing program that you have here, and I fully, fully support this. May you continue with a lot of strength, Bezat Hashem, to continue this mitzvah for the entire cycle of Sefer Torah this year and every single year. I would like to share with you a thought <clears throat> based on a pasuk that says the following. If you see the donkey of someone you hate, v'chadalta me'azov lo, and you refrain from helping him, azov ta'azov imo, you should go and help him. The construction of this pasuk is a little weird, because it should have just skipped the middle. If you see the donkey of someone you help, go help him, even if you don't want to. It says, "V'chadalta me'azov lo." You refrain from assisting him. Azov ta'azov imo. Go and help him. Azov ta'azov double, as we said in another recording. It means a lot. Go and help him. Why is it telling you, "V'chadalta me'azov lo"? You refrain from helping him. There's a story. One day, he was traveling to Vilna, and he was in a train. At the time, men used to smoke cigar. So they had wagons, they had uh, certain areas in the train where you could smoke uh, a cigar. I remember as a kid, there, there were uh, certain areas in the trains that you could smoke, and other areas you couldn't. In the airplanes, there was a certain section that you could smoke. You say this today to... Uh, to kids, they'll be like, what are you talking about? But it used to be like this. So at the time of Rabbi Sal Salantra, for sure, it was like this, approximately 200 years ago. <clears throat> and so he, he took out his cigar and he started uh, smoking, like all the gentlemen. And then there was a young man who was the chutzpan, and he started screaming at Rabbi Sal Salantra, why are you smoking? You see that people are not interested, blah, blah, blah. It's, 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 it's choking the people. It made a whole fuss of it. Rabbi Sal Salantra could have said, you know, this is a, a smoking area. But he didn't say that. He just put it down and he extinguished his cigar. Now he went the extra mile. He went to the window and he opened the window so that the smoke goes out. And here the same young man screams at Rabbi Sel Salantra, not knowing who he was, obviously. And he says, don't you see it's freezing cold outside? Why are you opening the window? We, 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 you know... He didn't say anything, just closed the window until he reached his destination. When he got down from Vilna, and the young man also was getting off in Vilna, thousands of people came to the train station to receive the great Gador Ador of Israel Salanter. When the young man saw who he was, and he asked, who is this man? He said, Israel Salanter. He felt extremely, extremely embarrassed. He came to the rabbi in his residence where he was staying, and he begged him, forgiveness. I'm so sorry. I didn't know who you were. I, I misbehaved, etc. Forgive me. But he said, Salanter said, no, no problem. I forgive you. No problem. And he said, Salanter, instead of stopping the conversation right there, said, what are you here for? And he tells him, I'm trying to become a shochet, so I want to pass my test of shechita. And Rabbi Salanter said, well, that's one of the reasons I'm here. Uh, I came with my son-in-law, and he's the one who tests for Shechita. So very nice. I wish you good luck. The next day, he meets with his son-in-law, Avelia Laser, and he tests him. The guy was Amaret. He didn't know anything. That was very embarrassing. He found out about it. Let me say to his son-in-law. He said, no, this guy didn't pass. Okay, I want to talk to him. He called him. He spoke to him. He gave him Chizuk. He told him, I want to have tutors teach you and make sure that you become a mumche in Kashrut, in Shechita. And that's what he did for months. He made sure that he had the right teachers that taught him Shechita. At the end of the course, he passed, he became a Shochet mumche. That guy went to Rabbi Sal Salanta at the end. He said, why did you help me so much? I didn't deserve anything. I came, I embarrassed you. If anything, I deserve to be kicked out. You know, not only I embarrassed you, also I didn't know my material. I, I failed miserably in the test. And not only that, you went and you helped me. He told him, you see, the Pasuk says that when you have, you know, hatred 
for someone in your heart, if you hate someone, say, I don't hate you, but I didn't feel comfortable with you, that's for sure, you know, it's a normal human trait. Uh, At the moment that you refrain from helping, the Torah tells you, that's when you move on, you make the move. When you want to not help the person, you decide, I'm not going to help this guy. Why should I help you? You're low life. You came to me, you screamed at me when I didn't have any, I didn't do anything wrong. I was smoking. I, I had feelings too. I, I don't want to help you. Oh, you felt miserable? Okay. So go. Good luck for you, to you. So that tells you, Go and that's when, when it hurts is when it counts. Go and help the person. Go out of your way and do that. And by the way, the only way to resolve problems between people is not just by saying, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, I love you. Oh, this is cheap. This is words. It doesn't work. Do something for the other one. Invest in the other person that you don't like. And that's how you resolve problems between people. I wish we would understand that. It's very, very difficult. But the Torah understands human psychology, of course. And it says, When you don't want to help the person, then go make the move. Azov Tazov, we'll go and help the other person. Shabbat Shalom, we'll to all.